Have you ever wondered if Zestimates are accurate? We have got a stat that is going to surprise you because I know it surprised me. Welcome to the Landis Look where we take an inside look at the world of real estate. And today I'm here with Kristen. Kristen, thanks for being here. Of course, thanks for having me. Kristen, you're gonna give us the inside scoop on Zestimates. So first of all, at a high level, what would you say about Zillow's Zestimate? Zestimates are good um, for a starting point in thinking about what your home may be valued at or what the market says your home may be valued at. Um, it's good for looking at the different trends in the market. Um, but when it comes down to really knowing how much you should list your house for, I think sometimes we have to take a, um, a deeper dive. And what, so what makes it a good starting point, but not the overall authority? Well, just because it will give you, um, I, I would say a range of what your house may be valued at, but it's only looking at specific data. So um, it doesn't have the ability to know what updates you may have made to your home, any modifications or changes you may have made, um, and uh, other different things that maybe the layout um, may be different from other homes in the area. Um, I will say that it's pretty good for condos and townhomes because yep. those are, are pretty, you know, I won't say cookie cutter, but Similar. pretty consistent. Yeah, pretty yeah. consistent in what they're like as far as the layout, square footage, things of that nature. So they, they're pretty spot on when it comes to the values on those. Yeah, I mean, because if you're taking the public data, which is like square footage and you're built in those sort of things, bedrooms and bathrooms, yeah, if the houses were built by the same builder and they're 10 years old, there probably isn't a ton of variation. But if you're in a historic neighborhood, like both of us live in, the houses are 100 yeah. years old, man, there's a wide variation in the houses. There definitely is. Um, uh, you know, sometimes homes are um, completely gutted and renovated mm -hmm. and um, they are like brand new, you know? Yep. So just so many different, different factors and variations. Yep. Kristen, we were looking at some numbers that are actually published by Zillow that really surprised us when we first started this conversation. And so Zillow, they have their estimate if your house is off market. And then I don't know mm -hmm. if you knew this, but when the houses go on the market, a lot of times stuff gets updated about them. It may get, you know, new pictures get put up or details about the house, that sort of thing. And then they update the estimate. But for those of you out there, this is the number that I think is going to surprise you. Kristen, do you remember the percentage of time that the estimate was within 5% of the final sales price before the houses are listed? How often was the estimate within 5%? I believe it was only 38 or 39 percent. I think you're right. So listen to that, folks. If you do not have your house listed, you just go online and you're like, hey, what's my house going to sell for? In Atlanta, the estimate is right like 38 or 39 percent of the time. That is not super accurate. Now, once it's listed and it gets new pictures and make sure the description's right and you've got all the beds and baths and features right, it, it improves because obviously it needs that data. But still, at that point, it's 5% accuracy is only, what was it? It was 80, 85, yeah, I think 85% of the time. Yeah. So, you know, at a, you have a four or $500,000 house or more, a million dollar house, man, to be off by 5%, 15% of the time, it's still a decent amount. On the flip side, it is still some accuracy. Um, Kristen, before we wrap this up, one thing you mentioned um, earlier on is you said, this is good for seeing market trends. What makes the estimate good for market trends? Um, well, because it, it they're able to track what has changed year over year, you know, yeah. or um, every, you know, three to six months and, and the market changes. And so, yeah. you know, once a house actually sells, that's when you get the true data anyway. Um, mm -hmm. And so they're able to keep up with it and, and they know year over year what that looks like. Yeah, so you can look at that in your neighborhoods and zip codes and be like, hey, my, the price it has for me in 2018 may not be accurate, or it may be, but it may not be. But the change from 2018 to 2020, that's what you're saying. It should be accurate. Yes, absolutely. Yep, the percentage. Awesome. Well, Kristen, any final thoughts on the Zestimate or getting people's actual, actual value? If they want to get the actual value, what do they need to do? I would definitely recommend you reach out to your trusted real estate advisor um, and ask for a comparative market analysis, um, you know, just so that you know or have a better idea of what the value is for your home. Yeah, awesome. I love that advice. So thanks for listening, y'all. I hope you were as surprised by we were at the fact of um, how often 
The Zestimate is not within 5% of the sales price. And it's a great tool on Zillow's own website. I think it says, hey, this should be a starting point, um, which it should be a starting point. It is a good starting point. So Kristen, thanks for your time today. Everyone, thanks for watching. If you found this entertaining, share it with someone else. If you have a personal question, drop your um, contact info um, to us in a private message. Kristen would love to help you out and figure out the exact CMA for your house. Thanks all. Listen to you. See you next week. Bye everyone.